I had somebody leave me a comment and they asked me, how do I feel about people saying that Errol Spence has a better resume than Terrence Crawford? And with that being said, I'm actually going to use this comment as a springboard and an opportunity to actually talk about Errol Spence comments and Danny Garcia and all that stuff. I'm going to wrap this all up in one. How do I feel about it? Um, I'm cool with it. And I don't mind if people say that. But at the end of the day, it depends on what you value in a resume. Do you value a fighter's name or the level of the opposition? That's something that people really need to think about when they're talking about analyzing and comparing resumes. Do you value names? Or the level of the opposition. Because like I said before. You can fight a top tier name. It doesn't mean that they're still a top tier fighter. They're a fighter living off the fumes. Of their accomplishments of yesteryears. It's the same thing with Manny Pacquiao. Yes. Ugas beat Pacquiao. But did he beat the Pacquiao that we know did he beat the Pacquiao, the reason why we fell so in love with Pacquiao? Did he beat that Pacquiao? No. But the point is, he beat a man who has a name. So therefore, it's looked at as a high-quality opponent because at one point in time, Manny Pacquiao was a high-quality opponent. But what you have to ask yourself is, is that person still a high-quality opposition with a name? So that's what you got to look at. And a person can fight high quality opponents with fighters who doesn't have no name. And you guys will chalk that up as having a shitty resume because you're limited in what you know about boxing and what you watch and what you value and what you are, you know, concerned with. That's the case of Terrence Bud Crawford. But at the end of the day, would I say that Errol Spence has a better resume than uh, Terrence Crawford? Of course not. Because Terrence Crawford has cleaned out a division. And it's gearing up to clean out another division. Terrence Crawford has held more belts up on his waist than Errol Spence. How could I say that a guy who's only ever fought in one weight division is better than a guy who's a formal undisputed champion and who is now residing in his opposition's current position and is holding a belt and is also looked at as not only the best 147 pound fighter, but the best fighter in the world. And that's the question that people really got to ask themselves. If you're going to say that Errol Spence has a resume, this is where that stuff is going to hurt. Then how does it look that Terrence Crawford, somebody who supposedly has an inferior resume compared to Errol Spence, has always been considered pound for pound number one fighter not just in the world, but he has always been higher up on the list than Errol Spence. And Errol Spence, supposedly, and to some, has a better resume. Do you see how that stings? Do you see how that resume don't mean anything? It actually just makes it look worse? It makes it look worse. Because if, if he has a better resume, then how come Errol Spence can never penetrate past the third and third and fourth category when it comes on anybody's pound for pound list <laughs> you know what I'm saying anybody who's being realistic you know we ain't talking about no champ side shit you know what I'm saying and that's no this is just fact you know what I'm saying it's a lot of nut swinging going on over there you know what I'm saying but anybody who's just being realistic so how does somebody with an inferior resume be considered a pound-for-pound pound best fighter than somebody 
who supposedly has fought better opposition than them. You can't make that make sense because at the end of the day, it's not just about names. And this is where the Danny Garcia and Errol Spence comments come in. You want to know why he jumped on Danny Garcia like that and end up having to backtrack a little bit, clean it up and say, oh, no, I wasn't talking about you. I was talking about your dad. You want to know why he's doing that? Because Errol Spence gets upset when anybody who he previously fought doesn't do well because it makes him look bad. And that's when you realize, just like Ness said in the Rising Glove series, when Ness broke down Errol Spence's opponents, the question you got to ask yourself is this. Here, let me reconfigure it a different way, okay? How many undefeated fighters has Errol Spence defeated? And has Errol Spence how many pound for pound fighters in their prime pound for pound fighter undefeated pound for pound fighter number one pound for pound fighter undefeated has he fought and beat none yes he has some good names but they're damaged perishables damaged goods for the most part, or already have a crack or a chink in their armor or on their way out the game or their check collecting. All that is true. These are not what they used to be. They got a crack in their armor. They're on their way out the game and they're check collecting. This is why, because the same way he talked about Danny Garcia is the same way he talked about Sean Porter. All of a sudden, when Sean Porter goes to fight Terrence Bud Crawford, Sean Pointer is a burnout, he's old, he's this, he's that, he's no longer the same fighter that he was. Why? Because Terrence Bud Crawford made it look easy, okay? Danny Garcia went in there and had a bad showing, you know? So once again, it, make, it, it, it makes it look like somebody who Errol fought, well, it really wasn't that tough of a fight then if this guy is giving him the blues. And he knows that. That's why he's so quick to come back and shit on Sean Porter. That's why he's so good, so quick to come back and shit on Danny Garcia. And I guarantee you, anybody else who he previously had fought, if somebody else goes on fight, especially somebody he doesn't like, he gonna have shit to say about them. Because what you ultimately need to realize, and I'm not trying to take away credit from Errol, I'm just being honest, something that is foreign, to 99% of these human beings walking the planet today. The truth is, they're just names. Let's face it, if you fight Keith Thurman now, you're just fighting the name. If Errol Spence, like Ugas, was to fight Pacquiao, you would just be fighting the name. Let's just be honest. And with Kell Brook, and this goes for Bud and Errol Spence, Kell Brook was already one step out the door and check collected. Okay? He was just a name. All these guys that are just a name. So what do you value at the end of the day when it comes to resume? Do you value just the name, but not the level of with the but not the level of which the opera but not the level in which the opposition is operating on? Are they still a level 10 fighter with that name? then that's where you can give credit. That's why I say, how many undefeated, ranked pound for pound, number one, two, or three fighters has Errol Spence beat? And the answer is none. So what do you value as a person when you look at resumes? It's the same way we look at pound for pound. It's individualized. It's what you favor. So that's what I think about people saying that Errol Spence has a better resume than Terrence Crawford because on paper and to the uninitiated, it's true. And this is why he talked the shit that he talked about Danny Garcia. Because he don't want to sit up there and have a tough fight with you and then you have a bad showing in your next fight. It makes Errol look bad and that's why Errol got something to say. And most people say, 
the nerve of Errol Spence talking about somebody with excuses when he, he's, he's been handed us nothing but excuses for years now. I can't argue with that. That's 100% accurate. How can you sit up there and toot your horn about somebody making excuses when we had go get a belt, you across the street, you can't sell, uh, I'm on Showtime, I don't fight for ESPN, um, you're gonna have to take this lower percentage, you're gonna have to do this, you're gonna have nothing but excuses for years. So yes, the audacity of Errol Spence saying that, it's a big contradiction, it is. But when it comes to Danny Garcia and the shit he talking about with him is the same shit he did with Sean Porter. And when it comes to the resume, that's what it is. Yes, he has good names. But how is their engine running? That's all I got for now. Like, comment, subscribe. Bruce Vayne, I'm out.